here you can see how I have uh, mounted the hot heat sink onto the, uh, the mounting board. I've screwed from the back and I've drilled into the aluminium heat sink. I put some small uh, spacers, I just used some spare aluminium tube that I had lying around. You could probably use a biro um, tube or a ballpoint tube. Cut that up if you needed to. And uh, that's mounted that securely. And the, uh, the heat exchanger block is ready to be connected. So here you can see the radiator fitted inside the cool box. Um, just loosely at the moment, but ready to be tightened in a moment. And uh, the pipe's going through, and uh, on the outside, here we've got the, uh, the hot heat sink, and we've got the pipe coming through, going into the hot heat sink. And uh, if I lift that, it's all a bit tight in here. You can just see the other connector going through onto the pump, and the pipe coming off the pump will go around here and connect back onto the top of the heatsink. So now I'm about to fill that and uh, to do that I'm going to use a funnel and a pipe connected into here. And initially just to test it I'm going to do it with water only. I'll put some antifreeze in later once I've proved it works. So I've connected a, uh, a pipe with a funnel onto the uh, the pipe and I'm just going to start gently filling with water and what I'm looking for is the water to come out the top of the the top of the um, cooling block and it has just done that so now I'm going to lift this this is I'm sure a problem that a lot of water cooling CPU geeks are familiar with. I'm trying to connect it up. What I really need here is a T-piece but I haven't got one. And then I'm going to just try and uh, slip that over and on. The question is what sort of air bubble have I got in there? Difficult to see at the moment. Um, I think what I might have to do is get a T-piece, put it in there and have a pipe coming out the top um, which I can use for filling. Um, anyway, it's only when I turn the pump on I'll see if it's been successful or not. Here I'm looking at the end of the box and uh, I've just fitted on here a plastic case to uh, house the, uh, the connections and the, uh, the thermostat control unit So, uh, and I've just started to make holes through the top and uh, indeed feed the cables through. Um, this is the temperature sensor which will go out through the top and I'll place that um, through a hole into the inside of the, um, the cool box. I'm now going to show you how to connect up the various components. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is get yourself a good thick cable because this could draw um, possibly up to about 6 amps uh, depending on which uh, model of um, Peltier you use um, and you don't want the cables getting hot. Um, for safety sake I've uh, purchased a uh, cigar cigarette plug which has a built-in fuse in the end and I also chose one with a LED inside it because that's useful particularly to see, check that it's uh, connected properly. Um, <coughs> on the other end of the cable which comes in here into the box I've put a, uh, a terminal block because there's going to be plenty of things connected onto that. Um, and uh, if I flip over the, um, <coughs> the thermostat module, um, you can see um, I've connected um, the positive supply um, into the relay contacts. Um, and then the output here I put onto another terminal block. So this, give me, this gives me what I'll call a switched live which I can use to power the Peltier and the various fans, etc. Um, when, uh, when the cooling effect is required. <coughs> On the other end of the thermostat module, you've got two contacts for the supply to uh, make it work. Um, they're marked DCAC on this, um, so it probably doesn't matter which way they're connected. Um, but on a YouTube video, I did see that um, 
one connected with the uh, the corner terminal connected as a, uh, a positive. So uh, I'm going to connect the, uh, the positive, the voltage here, and uh, the negative on this side. Um, <coughs> you can see I've mounted it in a box, which I've uh, fixed to the backing plate. Of course, we're now looking at the end of this unit. Um, so let me do a bit more connecting up, and I'll come back and show you what I've done. Okay, so here it is all connected up. I've uh, fixed down the, um, the thermostat unit um, with four screws. You can use the offcuts of the, um, the PVC pipe as spacers to hold that up. Um, I've got the, the, the live and neutral, um, and uh, all the positive and negative, and uh, all the connections from every device here go back into the, uh, into the negative positive there's there's a supply into the um, supply for the uh, thermostat and um, uh, and then the negative comes back from that as well and then on the other side we've got the uh, the relay which gives us a uh, what I'm calling a switched live here and everything else connects into that okay so that's that's just about everything done now I couldn't resist adding a little extra which was a um, a 99p, what's that, um, about $1.60 for a little voltmeter. So if I connect this in, um, I'll just fix that down there. That'll just let me keep an eye on the voltage um, and see if my battery is draining while I'm using it um, so that I should, uh, I, I can uh, reduce the risk of my car not starting. And that's it. Um, and then the cover goes on afterwards.